Hi guys, so I've had an overwhelming amount of people ask me to do more food videos and as soon as I turn on my camera, all of my cats run through my house um, as fast as possible. So that's really cool. But <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, I'm always posting in my story what I'm cooking, if I'm baking stuff. And in my last video, um, which we will do, I will answer the Q&A questions, don't worry. Um, I just thought this would be a fun little break. I want to test the waters and see if this is something you guys would like. But um, I had mentioned that I had went to culinary school when I was 18, right out of high school, and I went for uh, patissier and baking, particularly like French baking. French baking is not easy, um, and it's kind of a pain in the ass, and it's really tedious. So something you should know about French food, um, I'm going to go off on a tangent because that's what I do. It's going to be a long video. Um, just just accept what I want to do, okay? Um, French food in general is extremely simple and doesn't use a lot of ingredients, but your <laughs> the methods in French baking and French cooking in general are extremely tedious, they take a lot of time, and they aren't really that fun <laughs> unless you just get fucking lit out of your mind and um, do it for your people on YouTube. But today, I'm going to make you guys croissants. I'm gonna make croissants, um, which use a method of French baking called dough lamination, which literally just means taking dough and putting a slab of butter, like a, like a thin brick of butter, in the dough and slowly, over time, folding it on top of itself and you want to keep it extremely cold and keeping the butter extremely cold not letting it melt and slowly folding over time will create the beautiful flaky layers that a croissant has and it's just as tedious as you think it is without further ado we need a good magical girl transition into our ingredients like i said french baking uses simple ingredients so there's not really a lot here. You can have fillings and I'll talk about that later. Um, sometimes I like to do like ham and Swiss or like cheese of any kind um, or um, chocolate, but I'm not really gonna do that today. <laughs> maybe, maybe I will add something at the end, but we're not, we can't, don't worry about your fillings right now. Just that's not, <laughs> trust me. That's not what you want to worry about right now. Okay, so, okay, so I may, it depends on how this audio goes, but I may do a um, voiceover instead. We'll see. If you're hearing this, then I didn't. Um, we'll see. My kitchen isn't the most audio, um, I don't, not, what, I don't fucking know. All right, so first off, you are going to need to soften six tablespoons of butter that's two tablespoons off from being a whole stick. Um, croissants are literally, they, they're just flour and butter. <laughs> um, so soften six tablespoons of butter. Um, with this, seriously, like leave it out overnight if you need to, but like don't just like put it in the microwave and just like some of it's kind of melted, you know, but most of it's softened. No, you, the butter situation with all of this is kind of like serious. It's not a game. <laughs> so just leave it out overnight, um, put it out in the morning. It'll take a few hours to soften. Um, I would recommend chopping it off, uh, chopping it up into little like squares like this. So then it'll um, soften faster. But this cannot be liquidy. This needs to be just like plain, just it just needs to be softened butter. <laughs> um, you will also need two sticks of um, butter, a cup of warm water, um, one packet of active dry yeast. This is like three fourths ounce, I guess. So usually like <laughs> all the packets are kind of the same, but this is the most popular brand and this is the one you'll probably find. So one packet, a fourth of a cup of sugar. We're gonna use three teaspoons of salt. Um, just whatever, just plain fucking salt. Um, three and a half cups of flour. Um, some recipes will call for bread flour. I'm using all purpose because that's what I have. 
Um, and bread flour and cake flour, like, they can get pretty expensive. But all-purpose works fine. I've used it with all-purpose before. It's fine. Um, you need a big bowl. You need an egg. This is honestly just for an egg wash at the, um, right before we bake. Um, a shit ton of plastic wrap. You'll see why. And some extra flour. Um, you always want extra flour for, um, kneading and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, the ingredients are super simple. <laughs> <laughs> super simple they are not semi homemade that's right kids it's time to activate your active dry yeast so you're gonna do one cup of warm water it has to be warm so yeast is super finicky if your water is hot your yeast will die if your water is cold your yeast will also just fucking die and sometimes sometimes you get yeast and it's fucking dead and it won't work at all. So this, hopefully this just works. <laughs> um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut open this packet of yeast. Yeast smells awful, but that's just life. Um, we're gonna sprinkle it evenly across the top of this. Make sure you get all of it, all of those nice boys. Um, we're gonna mix it in and then I'm going to put it in my oven, which isn't turned on. It's not preheated. It wasn't It wasn't even on today at all yet. Um, I'm just going to put it in there so it has a nice warm place to, like, incubate. I don't fucking know. But that's the best place, in my opinion, for it, especially because it's, it's not cold here anymore, but it's kind of chilly. So you just want to keep it in a nice, nice safe space. Tell it how much of a good boy it is. And hopefully in 10 minutes, it'll start doing its thing. It's actually, I haven't mixed it in yet, but you can see that it's already starting to like do its thing. All right, do you see this boy? He looks very good. That's great. So, we're gonna be making the actual dough now. So, we do a fourth of a cup of sugar and you just sprinkle it right over top of it, killing his ass. No, he's fine. And then we're going to do all of our flour. Like I said, you can use bread flour. Some people prefer it, but I'm using it on purpose because that's what I have. I'm doing three and a half cups. Um, I already sifted it, but you don't really have to sift it. I've done this without sifting, and it's like, honestly, it's been fine. Um, <laughs> I've never really had issues with it, like incorporating or being clumpy. So... Next up, we're going to do three teaspoons of just plain old fucking salt. Just salt. Three. Okay. And then we are going to, we're going to put our softened butter in, the six tablespoons. So by softened, it should look like, it should look like this. So um, regardless, you're going to have to cut it into like little pieces. So... I would recommend doing it before you even soften it because then it'll soften evenly and you won't have to worry about that. Also, this plate is super cute, right? I know. Um, okay, so this is basically your dough. We're going to start out with a spoon and we're, here we are. Already making a mess. We're going to start out with a spoon and kind of just start incorporating to the best of our ability. Use the biggest bowl you can find. If you have a stand mixer, good for you, I don't. Um, but you can use your dough hook and do all this. So we're not gonna have to knead it for too long, but if you're like me, most people don't have a stand mixer because they're fucking expensive. Um, and I feel like people only get them whenever they're married or if they're on a different kind of sugar baby lifestyle, which I'm not on right now. Um, I wish I was, but I'm on priority sugar baby lifestyle, so. Um, so you're gonna just work your dough together. Um, I do, maybe I can make bread for you guys sometime but I'm trying to keep it in frame. It's kind of hard, but kneading is a cool thing to learn. Um, so you turn, you fold it towards you, you press down as hard as you can, you turn your bowl, you 
press down as hard as you can. You just keep doing that. So really, with this dough, where it's at right now, um, we are going to just knead this. See, it's really shaggy right now. But we're just gonna knead this until it comes together, until all of this um, pulls away from the sides and becomes one piece of dough. It's, yeah, um, you'll see. So, let's go. Okay, <laughs> so this is him. Um, if you're using a bread hook, you should be able to make it a little bit smoother, but really the only goal is to get the butter incorporated. So it's not as ideal as like a bread of some sort where it would be completely smooth, but that's okay. It'll be fine, I promise. Um, <laughs> I've made dough with way worse. So really the only goal is getting it incorporated. So what we're gonna do, the same bowl that we made it in, you're gonna put it back in, you are gonna grab your plastic wrap, you're gonna have to use a shit ton of plastic wrap, Ooh. <laughs> and you're gonna put, okay, oh my god, why? Cover him, and like I said, you can put it in a warm place. It depends on your climate. If it's nice and warm outside, leave it on the kitchen table. Because it is a little bit um, cold here, I'm gonna put it inside my oven. Once again, it's not on. It's just a regular old oven. Um, I'm gonna put it in my oven and um, let it chill out for a couple hours, right? I know, that's why I said this is gonna be a thing. Letting <laughs> your yeast do its thing, letting the gluten do its thing, making, it doesn't need to be like completely sealed by the way, like this is fine. Um, you really have to be patient with it. So it's gonna rise, and when dough rises, it you want it to rise by like double. So ideally, if this all works out, this whole container will be full. Welcome back, I'm Sandra Lee, and it is cocktail time. I think my boy's good to go. So, this is like, it's kind of hard to show the camera, but this is a fun part. You can do one of these. <sighs> so satisfying, and a bunch of air should start like, you should be able to hear like bubbles popping and whatnot. So, we're gonna put this dude, let's put him down this way and get rid of this. So, now, really all we have to do is make it into a long... That was the timer for my dough. Um, now all we have to do is make it into a long rectangle. Honestly, pretty much the size of this <laughs> nice plastic rectangle boy right here. It doesn't have to be a certain length or anything, but it really should be a rectangle shape because that's the shape we need for the folds and whatnot. So I'm gonna start by making sure all the bubbles are popped out around the edges and stuff. You can usually like feel a little bit of them like popping. And then we are going to just start rolling them out. If you guys can really see that, but it's starting to pull back, um, that's kind of a sign that you have, your dough has kind of hit like its limit as far as like its elasticity um, for now. It doesn't mean that it'll stay like that, but he needs to go into the fridge. Um, that's, like this is, this is a decent, this is a rectangle. <laughs> it's not perfect. The edges don't have to be sharp, but. Make sure you brush off a little extra flour. It's not gonna kill it, but you just like, you just, too much extra flour can like dry it out, but it's not that serious. This dough feels great though. So I'm happy with that. So we're gonna do one of these. 
make it into a nice little nice little fold and we're going to take some plastic wrap lay it down and we're going to transfer him onto here Ah. And then I'm just gonna fold this. Give him a little fold like this. So it's happy. And come on, there we go. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. He, like this, nice little folded boy, is going to go into the fridge um, for an hour and he's gonna rest. We're gonna let that gluten. Take a big long rest, because you could see that it wasn't as pliable. Um, and then when we take it out, it'll be easier to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Oh, you might be wondering where I took my cute Totoro apron off. Um, it was, it's just, it was getting too loud. So <laughs> it had to go. So I already cut these in half, uh, long ways, but this is two sticks of butter. Um, I cut mine in half already and laid them out on some parchment because they were taking a minute to um, soften because you can't really cut them into like little pieces. But you want to cut them in half long ways and put them on a piece of parchment. I would do parchment because it's going to be the easiest. Wax paper, maybe too much. Plastic wrap or aluminum foil aren't going to work. So parchment, if you want to bake it all, parchment is a good best friend to have. Um, it's probably the best thing to like line pans with and shit like that. So we are going to cut them in half, lay them out like this. This is a bench scraper. I have a lot of tools from like culinary school that you probably don't have, but a metal bench scraper is such a great tool, especially when you're baking. If you don't have this, you can kind of try to find something flat to do this with. But um, I think using a bench scraper, even the little like plastic white ones, they're just, they're good tools. You got an extra hand. But now that these are laid out, we're gonna fold the parchment on top of it and kind of press it and keep it in kind of a square or rectangle shape. Because that's what shape it has to be in in the very end. So mine <laughs> right now is like seven inches long. Um, I kind of wanted to go for more of eight, but it's really, really soft right now, and I'm at the edge of my paper. So what has to be done anyway, it has to go into the fridge, and it has to chill um, probably about an hour until your dough is done. And I mean, you're gonna leave it in there while we mess with the dough too. So I'm going to leave it at this like nice seven inches and I'm going to put it in the fridge with my dough and I will be back in an hour so we can work on the dough. Okay, so our dough has been in the fridge for one hour and I rolled out the butter more and it ended up being like eight and a half inches long. So um, it's back in the fridge for now. But we're gonna make the base of our croissant dough. So, as you can see, <laughs> it's a rectangle. I'm gonna keep this because I don't wanna waste a bunch of plastic wrap. Um, so, <laughs> we wanna make a rectangle about double the length of the butter. So, what was the butter? Eight and a half, so like 16 and a half. So, it is super important to make sure that the butter stays cold. Like, this is cold right now, and you cannot put this on this soft. So, I need to do this fast. But basically, if it isn't 
cold enough, you're just not going to end up with croissants. They're just going to be like rolls, kind of. So um, you saw I had a little situation <laughs> with my butter slab, but it is fine. So now that this is ready to go, we are going to sandwich it. Don't like press too hard, but you got to sandwich it into kind of still kind of a rectangle, but more of a square rectangle, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, you do want an inch around the sides-ish, preferably around an inch. And then you're going to kind of press, roll it out. So we're actually going to, I'm gonna go ahead and fold it. It's not the right size yet, but I think it needs to go, um, I'm gonna actually put it in the freezer so that it'll go a little bit faster because I wanna get it rolled out. But I am going to throw it in there for like 10 minutes just so it can um, chill out. This isn't exactly where I want it to be, but to be completely honest, I want to be really cautious about letting the butter get too soft. And I'd rather err on the side of caution and have good like croissants than rush through it. This is super tedious, I know, but <laughs> you want to make croissants, this is, this is what you gotta do. So back into, I'm gonna put it in the freezer um, for about 30 minutes. Okay, so it's out of the freezer and I got it to the length I wanted it to be. So now I'm going to fold it over on top of itself. Kind of pull where you need to. Not too hard, don't break. Be really careful, you don't want to, at this point, you do not want to like have, you don't want to make any holes in the dough because it's gonna let the butter like come out and that is defeating the purpose of lamination. So now that it's like this, we're actually gonna go ahead and start the process over again. <laughs> so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wrap this up, put it back in the fridge this time, and let it sit for like 30 minutes, and then we'll bring it out again and do more laminating. So I'll see you in 30 minutes. Okay, it is out of the fridge, and now we are going to do the press roll thing again. I rolled this back out into the same shape we had before and then we're gonna do another one of these. And if you have any weird edges, it's not a big deal. Just try your best, don't rip it. Um, we're gonna do one of these boys and one of these. And we're gonna press it down. See how the dough kind of hydrates itself when it's in the fridge? And over time, it's just gonna hydrate itself more. I think that's probably good. Um, so we're going to pop this back in the fridge for another 30 minutes and we're going to do that two more times. So we're going to do two more folds. This, I already made the line just so I could do it carefully off camera okay so actually at this point you can wrap up one of these to um, to freeze and you can keep it and do these next steps the next time you want croissants which would be smart because this is gonna make a dozen to like 16 um, we're gonna cut them like in little triangles and you can get about six out of each of these six big ones or like eight like smaller sized ones, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing because whatever. Okay guys, it's the moment of truth. We can finally cut our croissants. Um, so the other half, like I said, keep it refrigerated and we'll get to it in a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead. Also, I'm using this on a glass table. Maybe don't, like, don't live my life. Especially if you, this isn't your glass table. <laughs> Maybe don't, but I like living on the edge. So I'm gonna cut off a little bit. Um, honestly, these like extra scraps, you can kind of like, I don't know, make it into, <laughs> make it, <laughs> I don't know, 
make it into a nice breadstick or something. Don't waste shit. You know, like that's still like like this like little scrap like it's it's edible, you know. And then I'm gonna cut off this end. Yeah, just kind of I don't know. Make some. <laughs> I don't know, is it Papa John's or Papa's in the house, whoever that has like the fucking, this is too buttery for this, but like the fucking, what is this? The like bread knot things? I don't know. <laughs> oh no, I didn't mean to throw it that hard. I, I love you. Ideally we should be able to get six out of this, we'll see. Um, but try your very best. I'm not, no one's perfect. Um, Hannah Montana said it best. You want to give like almost about an inch. Like this one's really good. The first one I always cut is like terrible. This one's pretty good. Okay, let's start with the prettier one. So this is a technique that I don't really see people use, but I learned this in culinary school. Um, you want to gently, very gently pull these like long ends out and then you want to gently like you do not want to rip this if you rip it it's just gonna be a sad day very gently pull this edge and you want the seam to be down um, so you're gonna very tightly I hope you can see this if not I'll do another one but towards the end, you want to, this is so hard to show, you want to pull the end super gently, and if you want to give them a curve, you don't necessarily have to. Um, as a croissant, do not, it's really tempting to like stack it up with toppings. Like you could even do like, I don't know, um, you could do like chocolate and like some like strawberry preserves or something like that. That would be really good. Or like raspberry, or you could do, like I said, ham and cheese is really good, or like pepperoni and cheese, so then it would be like a pizza one, and you could dip it in marinara, I don't know. But, this is how you add toppings. Um, if a little bit leaks out, like cheese-wise, it's actually, it's not bad. It gives you kind of like a crispy, kind of like little, little parts that are great, but um, kind of like that burnt cheese on a pizza crust, but... Do not add too much. It's really tempting, I know, and don't cover the whole thing. It's just going to be a fucking mess. So then you just want to tightly, and, uh, ba -ba. and then you want to gently, not even, just kind of hold it in place. And then that's your seam on the bottom. And like these little cheese bits will get nice and like burnt and good, but that's oh, and <laughs> this little tree's croissant. Okay, guys, these are raw croissants. Yeah, I already added an egg wash to them. Um, um, that's just one egg and a tablespoon of water whisked together, and you just brush it like uh, just a light layer over top of them. It helps them get really brown and crispy. But we are gonna let these proof for one hour. All right, guys, it is 10 p.m. I started this at like 11 a.m., so this is the thing. But it is 10 p.m., and I hope you can't hear all the sirens outside. But I did another egg wash after letting them proof for an hour, and now I'm going to throw them into a 400-degree oven for 25 minutes or until they're brown. So, yeah, it's finally time. Okay, so I made, I made some croissants. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful to you and if you want to waste an entire day of your life making butter bread, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> um, check out my Patreon, check out my Instagram and my Twitter, all of it's Siren Cove, it's linked below and I will see you guys next time. Let me know if you like the food videos. Bye.